Hi, this is Troy Downing, a Montana State Auditor. This is our CSI Insider Podcasts. One of the things we're trying to do in this administration is, is educate. We're going to do a series of podcasts to educate consumers, to educate industry, to understand what we do, how to protect yourself, how to protect your families, how to thrive in industry and regulated industries in Montana and securities and insurance. And uh, just watch the space. We're going to continue pushing out product and we welcome your comments and thanks for joining us. I'm Troy Downing. I'm the Montana State Auditor and the Commissioner of Securities Insurance. And I'm sitting here with Oli Olson, who's my chief legal counsel, and we're going to be talking about multi-level marketing and pyramid schemes today. Now, first, a little bit of background here, just in case you're wondering. Our office is, uh, we're supporting the No Shave November to bring awareness to uh, cancer, to uh, men's health issues and suicide. So uh, please uh, excuse our relaxed grooming standards today, but thank you for joining us. So, Oli, first of all, you know, multi-level marketing um, can you just give us a little bit of background of what exactly that is? Yeah, so multi-level marketing is a structure in which a business recruits other people to sell their products under other people. And so you can have several layers of salespeople. And the, the structure that is allowed and that is proper and that's been around for you know over 100 years is that you make commissions off of your team's sales. And that's fine. That works. But what we're talking about today is when you make commissions off of not the sales of products, but off of just recruiting people into the program. So when you're talking about that, just recruiting people in, and it's not about just creating a network of selling product. So that probably, it sounds like that crosses the um, the line into being a pyramid scheme. Would you agree? Yes. And so does. a pyramid scheme, you know, from what I understand is when you're making money, by bringing people into a group and they pay money that goes up the chain and they bring in more people into the group. I mean, how would you describe it? Yeah, that's essentially it. The The fundamental nature of a pyramid promotional scheme, which is what it's called in Montana, is that you're making money by someone who comes into your scheme. They have to pay a fee and you use that fee to pay everybody that's already in the scheme. Right. And the problem with that is, is that in order to make that sustainable for any time at all, you have to start recruiting exponentially more people and it eventually collapses. Right. You know, one of the things that I've heard is that in a pyramid scheme, a lot of people are enticed because they think of all this money that's going to start going up this uh, network. Um, but from what I understand, it's only the top couple of people in that pyramid that actually make money. And I've heard numbers as high as 97, 98% of the people that join a pyramid scheme lose everything. Uh, is, would you say that was a fair assessment? It is. It's a, it's a mathematical certainty, and that's why we make pyramid schemes illegal. Because when they collapse, and they will collapse, uh, the people who came in last are going to lose all their money, and people up the line will probably lose their money too. Uh, and so, yeah, most of the people in a pyramid scheme lose out, and it's just a matter of time is when that's going to happen. Right. And my understanding, and I, I just want to be clear to the audience, that there is a difference between a multi-level marketing company or an MLM and a pyramid scheme. Um, just because you're an MLM doesn't mean it's a pyramid scheme. Um, and to be clear, MLMs can legal, legally operate in Montana, but pyramid schemes are illegal. Is that correct? That, that's correct. And the fundamental difference is, <clears throat> excuse me, is that a multi-level marketing company, people are making commissions off of products. There is sales going on, and that's where you're making your money. And that's a sustainable business model. Everybody, you know, All businesses essentially operate that way. Where it crosses into a pyramid scheme, which is illegal because it's unsustainable, is when you're making money not off of a product, but off of just bringing people into your scheme. Right, right. So what regulatory authority does the state, or more specifically this office, have in regulating MLMs? So the way we, we have it set up is that any anyone who wants to run an MLM in Montana has to register with this office, and we require them to give us some basic information. Uh, what's their compensation structure? Um, you know, where where are people making most of their money on commissions? Um, what product are they selling, and how much are they selling it for, and what is it really worth? The reason we have MLMs register and look at this information is we want to vet out the legitimate multi-level marketing companies who are just doing business legally versus what might be a pyramid scheme or might turn into a pyramid scheme. Um, and pyramid schemes are absolutely illegal. And if we identify a multi-level marketing company as actually operating as a pyramid scheme, um, 
then we'll issue a cease and desist to make sure they don't do business here in Hurt, Montana. Right, right. So a legitimate MLM wanting to do business in Montana, they have to register with this agency. How, how do they do that? That's correct. So if you go to our website, uh, there is a, a, a sec, section for multi-level marketing companies where they uh, we have some forms there. And you just uh, fill out the forms. You talk to some of our folks down at Securities, and they'll help uh, the company come into compliance. Okay. And we have had some actions against multi-level marketing companies recently who've not been following the rules and trying to bring them into compliance. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So we, we've noticed recently that, uh, well, this office right now has 14 multi-level marketing companies registered. And we know there's thousands of multi-level marketing companies operated in the U.S. and many of those in Montana. So what we've done recently is, is based on complaints, um, we've identified uh, six of these, of these types of companies um, and issued administrative actions, which is essentially a fine because they had not registered with our office. Um, and in that process, we identified one of those as an alleged uh, pyramid promotional scheme. In any event, we've assessed fines to these companies, and we've already settled uh, five of these actions for almost twenty, no, over $20,000 in fines and almost $10,000 in restitution. Uh, and what we're doing now is saying, okay, now going forward, uh, by December 15th, anybody out there who's not registered yet, you need to come forth and register, self-report that you haven't been registered, we're going to assess a thousand dollar fine and then help you get registered and in compliance with the law. After December fifteenth, if you haven't come forward, uh, then the fines could get very steep. Right, and that's that's important to note for anybody doing business in Montana right now as an MLM. If you have not registered, uh, we are pursuing these and uh, we are filing and uh, pursuing agency actions. So we do have that amnesty, and it really would behoove you to come in and take advantage of that amnesty, get your company registered. And if it's a legitimate company, then then great. We'll go through the registration process and, and everything is good. Um, we have had some instances, and, and I can think of at least one, where we've had an MLM that not only did not comply with the requirement to register with this office, but also crossed that uh, order of acting as a pyramid scheme. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, the, the one we've had this year already that uh, we issued a cease and desist order on was uh, called Fressage. And uh, it's a worldwide scheme. And it's just a classic pyramid scheme. If you look on their website, they even have a picture of essentially a pyramid that describes their program. Um, but what they do is they try to hide the fact that it's a pyramid between, behind concepts like cryptocurrency and blockchain and smart contracts. It's smoke and mirrors, essentially. It was a pyramid scheme. Um, we issued a cease and desist order on that one. We have another one we've identified recently. It's still um, in litigation. So uh, those are allegations right now. Uh, but, but that company is more similar to a multi-level marketing company. Uh, they do have a, a, a marketing scheme that encourages uh, recruitment over, we believe, uh, over sales of actual product. Right. So a quick question. We've been talking a lot about the sponsors or the, the companies or the, the founders of these MLMs and or um, pyramid schemes. What about a participant? Let's say there's somebody that uh, is recruited into being part of this pyramid and investing in. So, you know, they put their money or assets in that, that go up that pyramid and recruit people below them. Are there any legal repercussions for somebody being a participant? You know, often unknowing they're, they're not the sponsor, they're just basically a, a, a person coming into the program? Yeah, there could be. If, if, if we identify someone who is not just participating unknowingly in a, in a pyramid promotional scheme, but actually promoting it, knowing what's going on, a big player, certainly there could be uh, the same type of legal liabilities that the, uh, the originator could have. Right. And again, going back to, I just want to reiterate that it's not illegal to operate a multi-level marketing company in Montana. You just have to follow the rules and, and register. Um, but uh, those, you know, what, if you get involved in one of these, really, what are the red flags in identifying that as being a problem? If you, you know, may one of your friends is, you know, selling some product or representing some company and they get you involved and you're looking at this, what are the red flags that should say that this might be a problem? Yeah, it's a good question. The red flags is, number one, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. If, if there is a, a company that says, hey, you can make easy money, 
um, you can make fast money, then that's a red flag because actual multi-level marketing companies to make money in those, you got to work really hard. You got to right. be a salesman. You got to have salesmen under you. You got to recruit people and you got to motivate them. Uh, another big red flag is where is the commission structure focused? Is it focused on recruiting more people into the program or is it focused on sales? If it's focused on recruiting, it's more likely to be a pyramid scheme. Um, another one is what is the product they're selling and does anybody want it and how have they priced it? If they've got a product that nobody wants or it's priced exorbitantly high, that could be just masking what really is a, a pyramid scheme. And the other thing is, is there a large buy-in required? Right. Um, if, you've, if you've seen the, the uh, documentary on Lou LaRoe, uh, that was the allegations in that case, that it got to the point where people had to buy so much product just to get into Lou LaRoe uh, that essentially they could never sell it. And so the way they would make their money is by recruiting more people in and making money off of them doing the buy-in. Right. That's a that's essentially a pyramid scheme if if it's true. Right. Well, that, that that's an interesting uh, quandary there. If you you know enter into one of these sales uh, networks, and uh, obviously you need product to sell, and uh, in what you were just talking about, they had just an exorbitant amount that they had to put into this to be a participant. You know, that, that's that's a good um, red flag. But something you started out with there that I, I think is a good thing to reiterate. And and this is true in a lot of things in life, not just in, in what we're talking about here with MLMs and pyramid schemes, but uh, saying, uh, you know, if it sounds too good to be true, it's probably not true. I mean, kind of words to live by. Or uh, another thing you said was, you know, fast, easy money, uh, you know, as a red flag. Again, words to live by. I mean, the reality for, for most of us is is uh, you know it's a grind. It's not easy to you know just flip a switch and and suddenly uh, be successful in something like that. So those those are good things to watch out for. So you know we've we've talked a lot about the again the sponsor side of this. The you know the people putting these programs together. Uh, there's also victims, and we need to talk about the victims. So if you do end up in one of these, you didn't, you know, hear this podcast or you weren't watching out for these red flags and you find yourself, you know, halfway down the road and being a victim of one of these, uh, of these uh, programs, what, what can you do? What, as soon as you find out or, or even suspect you're a victim, what, what, what do you do? Call our office. Uh, you go on our website, give any one of us a call here and we're going to direct you down to our fabulous securities investigator team. Uh, they'll talk to you. They'll take a look at what's going on. And uh, what we want to do is make sure if you are you know, an unknowing victim to this type of scam, uh, we want to see if we can shut it down, first of all, to protect other Montanans, um, but also perhaps get you restitution for the money that you may have lost in this scam. So Oli uh, came into our office uh, earlier this year, and we're really happy to have him. Uh, he was working in the Department of Justice, and it's good with the charge of this agency as a criminal justice agency. Um, and a regulator to have somebody with uh, Oli's experience. And Oli, we're really happy to have you. Can you just talk a little bit about your background and what uh, what led you here? Sure. Yeah, it was a winding road. I um, I started out as an engineer down south and and thought I wanted to go to law school to be a patent lawyer. Okay. I got out to law school and, uh, long story short, discovered that uh, working at a big patent firm wasn't really going to be something uh, that was conducive to my personality. Uh, meanwhile, I was taking a class with a couple of uh, federal prosecutors and they encouraged me, you know, based on um, that class to go into prosecution. So I came back to Montana and I, uh, I found a, a prosecution job down at the city of Helena doing DUIs and uh, domestic violence cases. And then I moved up to the Department of Justice where I was doing um, uh, crimes against children, internet crimes, and then eventually homicides um, and, and rape cases and uh, did that for 12 years. And now I'm really excited to be here, uh, taking a little bit of a turn into the white collar crime area. Uh, and I'm, I'm really, really impressed with how much good this office does for Montana. The insurance and securities touches everyone in the state. And so um, you can really do a lot of good here uh, as a criminal justice agency. Right. Well, great. Um, you know, I think your, your background is meaningful to what we need here. And I, I appreciate you. Um, talking to the audience a little bit about that. But I, I just want to say one thing that has been just a, a delight having you on the team is how you've just jumped in head first and really taking all of these. A lot of people don't realize, as, as uh, Oli just said, you know, this agency, we cover a lot of ground with, you know, securities regulation and enforcement, with uh, insurance regulation and enforcement. It, it's, it's a lot a lot of stuff, a lot of moving parts, and it's really meaningful for a lot of Montanans. And having a team 
that understands that and is interested in doing that is important to me, important to this agency, important to this administration, because we are getting a lot of good work done. And uh, under Oli, we have just a, an awesome legal team that is out there protecting Montanans and not just against, you know, pyramid schemes, uh, MLM companies that aren't registering, but, uh, you know, much worse from, you know, financial fraud, insurance fraud, um, all kinds of things, as well as protecting industry against bad actors as well. So uh, I'm just really happy to have a very strong team to, that is in-house so they understand the intricacies of insurance, of securities, and all the work that we do here and can do meaningful work, not just on the enforcement and prosecution side, but just handling all the various bureaus within this agency when they have legal questions that come up in our day-to-day -day work. So just happy to have you all here. Thank you. I think we have, honestly, one of the best teams of lawyers in the state, and that uh, is really speaks to the team that you put together why we've attracted such a uh, great pool of talent. Well, this has been really interesting, and uh, for those in the audience, you know, we are a, a criminal justice agency. We're here to protect consumers, but we're also trying to educate because it's a lot better to, you know, head something off at the pass than to have to go down the, uh, the path of, you know, doing agency actions. Uh, so thank you for listening, and uh, I just want to wrap this up to see if there's anything else that we haven't covered that you think we should talk about. No, I think that's it. I think it just comes back to, like you said, uh, there's no free lunch, and if it looks too good to be too true, it probably is. Right. Well, thank you all for listening. If you have questions about multi-level marketing or pyramid schemes, uh, if you uh, would like to talk to our office or think you've been a victim, we're at csimt.gov, or you can find us at 444-2040. Thanks for listening.